Hello, eh? Aloha po alima. Aloha Friday, and welcome to another edition of Storytime with Auntie Lihua. Today we have a special guest um, joining us, Kauai native, brilliant artist, author, entrepreneur, Juana McAdams. Aloha, my kako. Hey, ala, eh, sister. Um, we are truly yeah, yeah. humbled as Moana will be reading for you all today her very first book um, that she authored. The Adventures, let me bring the book. The Adventures of Nakoa Nohea, Fishing Day with Papa Ray. Yeah. So we are very, again, very humbled and excited for Moana to be joining us today. Um, so uh, before we jump in, uh, Sister, can you tell me and our viewers who and or what inspired you to write this book? Sure, of course. Um, so my inspiration for the book was partly a partly people, members of my family, particularly my father, who um, Papa Ray is modeled after him. And also, um, I was inspired by our island home of Hawaii, because our beautiful people and culture. And I really wanted to share it um, in a more authentic way, like a lot of the way that people experience Hawaii is only through tourism. They only see the surface, but they don't really understand the culture and the people who truly live there. So um, that's one of the things that I really wanted to incorporate into the story. Um, at the time when I was writing the story, I was just um, recovering from the loss of my father. My, my dad had actually passed away from a battle with cancer. Um, and so it was a real difficult time for me, hard to express what I was feeling. Um, my dad was like my best friend and we were very, very close. So doing this book was both a way for me to capture his spirit, um, and also ensure that my niece and nephew, who is like, you know, second, third generation off, would have some memories of their papa, um, because they were still so young when he passed away. And I remember my grandparents were young when I passed away. And a lot of the stories that I wish I knew about them, unfortunately, you know, vanished with them. So I really feel like it's important for us to capture our stories. Um, I know at the beginning it's a little hard because you're not sure if your story even matters, but it does. Every time I share this story, I get such positive feedback and people tell me that, will you write more books like this? You know, like we want more. So while when I started, I was very nervous. Um, clearly there are people out there who are craving these stories because what we typically get is not um our high uh the our, the indigenous cultures are typically not highlighted in you know the things that we normally see on the market so um that was my way to contribute and pay tribute to our people mm -hmm. mahalo that's beautiful when i actually first read the story um it's a very emotional story i i i said i wasn't going to you know, say anything about the story, but I just, I just, we love the story. Our Juana loved the story because like you said, it's a very authentic journey. Um, and it is a beautiful story um, that a lot of folks from Hawaii would definitely, uh, you know, chi it rings for them. Very true for a lot of the way in which we live in Hawaii. So mahalo nui. Um, so before we jump in, and I know I, I gave a little bit a little bit away. Um, can you warm us up and give us like a little story summary of about what we're going to be hearing um, into the story? Very short glimpse. Yeah, it's about um, a papa and his two mo'opuna. They go on a beach adventure. Um, they come across some, some, some friends and they help some people along the way. So, yeah. Fabulous, fabulous. So without further ado, Moana McAdams. All right. Aloha, everybody. Today, I'm going to read to you guys my story, Fishing Day with Papa Ray. Uh, it's a story I wrote in 2018, I believe, 2018, 2019. <laughs> and it was illustrated by the talented Sheila Alejandro. Um, I also had some help from uh, a sister. Oh, I can't remember which island she's from. Big Island, I think. Um, Sister Kamakale Hiva Perdi Avelino. She translated the story into Ola Hawaii, which was 
um, very important for me because the another reason I wrote the book is to provide resources to our children and our kiki to give them fun ways to experience our language um, and to help them you know start their olelo journey so here we go you see the front page Emo Olelo no Reviado, and that's my dad, dedicated in memory of Reviado, husband, father, grandpa, Vietnam hero. And then on the bottom, I really wanted to, you know, we have Olelo no Eao in Hawaiian, which is our wisdom quotes. Um, and this one I found was fitting, Lele Kahoaka, which means that the spirit has flown away. And so our, our loved one has transitioned to the ancestral realm and you know is watching us from there so i'm going to share my screen so you guys can see the the reading and the art um oh shucks this we gotta enable the screen sharing again <laughs> i'll share my screen so you guys can see the art and um the words better as i'm writing i'm um, reading reading writing let's see try again okay there. all right you can see everything good yeah all right, but that's the cover. Let's see down here. And then in the front, you know, I love this as a kid. Like this is my book, and you can put your name inside. This is this book belongs to No Moana Kia Uh this is the front page that I just showed you. All right, let's get started. Okay, so once upon a time on an island in the middle of the ocean, there lived a brave boy named Nook. Nohea, I'm mean, sorry, Nakoa, <laughs> and a generous girl named Nohea. Nakoa and Nohea loved to swim at the beach and play in the waves, but most of all, they love fishing with their papa. So you can see, this is, you know, Island Keiki. We love the beach. It's like our, our own playground, Disneyland. <laughs> uh, let's see, can I keep going down? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Papa was a master fisherman who grew up learning to live off the land and the sea. His favorite snack was opihi. Um, um, so you can see, I should have mentioned on the first page, uh, the English on the top and the Hawaiian on the bottom. I would read the Hawaiian, but um, I don't like mess them up in this short period of time we have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One day, Nohea and Nakoa went on a fishing trip to Waipoli. So Waipoli is um, one of our beaches on the island of Kauai, and it was a place that was um, most favorite to um, my dad and my niece and nephew, you know, when he was alive. So I chose this place to capture, um, you know, that important fact for them and to really emphasize those favorite memories that they had with him. So it was their favorite place to swim. The reef protected them from big waves and strong currents. And as you can see, we have our beloved monk seal chilling on the, on the pohaku, which is a rare sight. I think we're seeing them more now, you know, with COVID and mm -hmm. the tourists not being there as much. And then we see our friends, the honu. Mm -hmm. Okay. Papa loved this beach too. He could easily cast his nets or fish off the reef with his bamboo pole. On a really great day, he could also pick opihi and limu off the rocks for a fresh, tasty treat. That opihi, that Hawaiian gold. <laughs> oh, my dad, he loved his opihi, that's for sure. Um, so this was an exciting and special day because Papa was ready to teach Nohea and Nokoa to fish for themselves. So they've been watching their Papa for a really long time, but now they finally get to try. Okay, so as they got their poles ready, Nokoa noticed a man on the beach. Papa, who is that man and why does his car have so many things packed into it? Nokoa asks. Papa answered, he lives on the beach because he doesn't have a home. Let's help him. Maybe we can share our fish, Nohea offered. So you can see they're very thoughtful, Kiki. Their, their Papa has clearly taught them some good values. All right. No, Nohea and Nakoa jumped for joy as Papa showed them how to spot 
all the colorful fish in the secret holes within the reef. This is one of my favorite pages because um, it just shows like how beautiful it is under the water, you know, like it kind of, to me, reinforces like the lesson, like to look beyond the surface because there's so much beauty to be seen just beyond like what you see with your naked eye. Um, and so this is, as a fisherman, you know, this is important, right? You don't just go, you take a look, you see what's going on in the water. Is it safe? What, what can we see under there? Um, it kind of helps you to know what kind of fishing pole you might need. Do you need some help around? Um, and then also like pay attention to the rocks too. You know, is it slippery? You don't want to get hurt when you're fishing and to be very mindful of the holes. Cause as you can see, there's a old paka paka down there looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bite your toe. <laughs> that manini and that, the, the uhu is staring at me. I, I know. I like put them on the grill already. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And the reason, so you'll see a lot of manini in the story and I chose that one because that's mm -hmm. actually my mom's favorite fish. So, oh yeah. Uh, next page. All right. So the fish nibbled on the lines, but Nohea and Nakoa were not quick enough to hook them. How can we help uncle if the fish aren't biting? Nohea asked. Nohea, the, the fish love to play too. And they're strong, just like you. A good fisher woman learns patience. So that's another really um, good lesson to learn from this story is patience. Not everything comes to us quickly, but some things are very much worth the wait. So let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. All right. Look, what's that dark shadow? Nakoa <laughs> shouted. Papa answered, oh, that's a shark. <laughs> they are the protectors of our people, our Amakua. Sometimes they chase the fish away and sometimes they bring them in. Let's see what happens. Oh, ho, ho. the shark's dark shadow chased a huge fish, school of fish towards the reef. Soon the water boiled with a feeding frenzy. Hold your poles tight. When you feel the bite, pull it up with all your might. <laughs> See, the shark is just like churning that water. Like, look at all that manini. Oh, yeah. you gotta throw the net on that bottom. <laughs> <laughs> you need the pole, just get the net. <laughs> it's probably what my dad would be doing. Hey, hold on, hold on, I'm gonna grab the net. Never mind that pole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. One, two, three, four, and more. Papa could barely keep up. And then you see the ohana in the background. Mm -hmm. As we know in Hawaii, it's always a family adventure. You know, we're all going together. So they're cheering them on in the background. Choo! All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, as you can see, Nako, I know I have their hands full. Look, Papa, they're so wiggly. Mm -hmm. um, and one, one secret, like, kind of thing about this page is that the arrangement of the characters on this page, you have Papa on the right side, and he's the one who has passed on, and then you have the family on the left who is still here. Beautiful. Um, okay. So this is Nohea. Papa, can we share a fish now? Like, she's always the helpful one. <laughs> so yes, but first, I will cut up one or two. We will offer them as a makana, or as a gift for those who don't know what that means, to thank the shark for bringing the fish to us. It is important for us to be good stewards and care for our land and sea so that it can continue to provide for us. So you can see Malana's, uh, Malana's, I always say Malana. Nohea is, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Nohea is, is learning her lesson and she's, you know, she's um, taking care of her Amakua. She's a good artist, look just like, <laughs> look just like. <laughs> <I know>. beautiful. <laughs> uh, so here's Nohea. Here you go, uncle. I hope this helps you, Nohea offered. Mahalo nui, young princess. Your papa taught you well. Remember this lesson and share it with others. So you can see he's just like super grateful, you know, like he was just cruising around like in his car, relaxing and not really expecting anything probably expecting the worst because people tend to teach to treat homeless like you know they're not good people unfortunately mm -hmm. 
but it's a very temporary situation, you know, like we got to be nice to those people. They're just in a difficult rut. You know, mm -hmm. anybody could be there. All right. And then the last page, Nicole asked Papa, why did you give away our pole? Papa explains to him, we have many at home so we can afford to help someone in need. And Nohea smiles with understanding. Now uncle can feed himself. Papa beams with pride. Yes, he can. Is all Pono. And you can see in the in the um in the drawing that Papa and the and the Keiki have like a full uh cooler of fish. Like it was a really good day, as we saw in the previous pages. Um, they have given their pole away. And so not only was it just a man, but he also has some keiki of his own to feed. So mm -hmm. you never know like how your kind gesture, how far it can go um, mm -hmm. and how meaningful it could be to somebody else. So um, encourage everybody, you know, to act with some grace and some empathy before we automatically go to negative thoughts. Um, you know, think about, what would, it, what it would it be like if you were in their shoes too? So I feel like that is very relevant, especially right now with everything we're going through, not only with COVID, but with, um, you know, the, the um, discrimination and, and racism that African-Americans and or Black people have been facing in this country, you know, um, they are people, they should be treated with respect, um, and their lives matter. So um, I really wanted to kind of highlight that, uh, the way this story can, uh, relate in very many different ways. Um, there's so many lessons to learn in this story. Um, and I hope you guys really enjoyed it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Beautiful story. Thank you so much. Sister. You're now, welcome. I, now I know in the, like, as you're going back <clears throat> in the back of the book, there's mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. um, so I love what you have next because it's such an educational tool for not just adults, but for the kids, right? And for that interaction to happen with, you know, parents and their keiki in teaching them, not just the moral of the story and what, you know, how we experience Hawaii in that sense, but also in the fact that you are teaching Olalo Hawaii right here and, you know, the game. So explain this page a little bit more yeah so um i thought it would be cool to put in some hawaiian words that would um that kind of highlight the and the spirit of the story that i was trying to tell um as well as incorporate some elements um and things in hawaiian culture that we that is really like a foundation of it so like kalo and taro you saw that on the i believe it was like the second page uh, where Papa, as a young Papa, was sitting in his garage with his bucket of opihi. And then in the background, you see like a patch of kalo, aloi kalo. Mm -hmm. um, and that is kind of um, a tribute to my, my kupu, my tutu, vahine, my tutu kane. Um, they had taro, like we had taro patches. I remember working in them um, as a little girl. And so it was, you know, it's my way to remember them too. Um, and, you know, we all know Halo as our, our older brother and, and the, the plant that we, we, we find our sustenance and, our, and the basis of our diet from. Um, let's see. I also wanted to have words from fishing, you know, so like upena is a net, um, which we didn't see a net come out this time, but <laughs> we should have. You got to be prepared, right? Maybe he wasn't prepared this time. He didn't think he was going to have that much fish. <laughs> He had one in the story, though. We know he had Yeah, one. he did. He was in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was in there. Um, we have makoi, which is your fishing pole. We have the mano, which is the shark. Of course, moana is the ocean. Um, and then we have tutukane, which is grandpa. And uncle is not really Hawaiian word, but it's like mm -hmm. a slang, uh, yeah. you know, that us lo local people use for uncle. Uncle. Um, and then Waipoli, uh, the dark sea. So, you know, I did some research before this story. I learned some facts about, you know, that beach that, uh, you know, like dark sea. I didn't know that was the meaning of it. Mm -hmm. Makes me want to dig like a little bit more to, you know, like know the importance of that place um, mm -hmm. during, you know, uh, the kingdom time. So, right. 
just things to inspire you to like want to learn more you know you see a meaning for something like oh i want what is the word for you know la 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 and you can is it uh, a is it a drop off moana like it, it, it white poly, poly. poly is um, it a drop off or it's it not just... a steep drop off but like the area is actually protected by a reef so it's uh they they also call it baby beach um because oh. it's the the way the reef is it mm-hmm. provides like this sandbar in the front that you can you know kikis can swim yeah. without worrying about the weight the big waves like pulling mm-hmm. them out right, right, right. um so there is a drop it's not a significant drop off like a diving kind of drop off but yeah there is a drop it, nice okay cool um, and then, of course, fishing words. We all love a good word search. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, you can look up some words and find them. Um, if you go to my website, um, I don't have them up there yet, but I'm going to be uploading, like, additional digital content. So it'll be, like, online word searches that you can, you know, you can scramble them up again um, and do them multiple times. So nice. just some ideas that have evolved over time. And then the last page um, is a, a huge mahalo nui to our Kickstarter backers, um, like Sister Lehua here, is one of the many who um, pre-ordered through our crowdfunding campaign. Um, and those pre-orders, um, you know, helped us raise the funds we needed to print the book because we self-published this. So I don't have a, a fancy traditional publisher. Like all this work is work that I put my mana and organizational skills <laughs> into, you know, like working with the printers, working with my artists. It's a huge effort to be a self-publisher, but it's so worth it because otherwise our stories probably wouldn't be out there. Like traditional publishers are super selective and they're focused on the money. Let's just be honest. Mm-hmm. So if, if they don't feel like it's going to be something that will be popular widely, and have a huge chance at making them money, they're not gonna, you know, bless it for their publication house. So um, I've had people ask me that before too, like what's the difference? So it is more work self-publishing, but it's a way to ensure that your story gets seen. Um, and if you, have, if you ever have questions about that, feel free to reach out. I'm not the, you know, 100% expert, but I can share my experience for sure. Is that the name on your dad's shirt, Mahi'ili? Mahi'ili Publishing, yep, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So any of my children's book will be published under Mahi'ili Publishing. I'm actually also thinking about like, um, I do want to work with children and encourage them to write. So if you have Keiki out there and they have like stories or if they're, you know, if they have um, art that they do, like show them to me. I can't guarantee that they're going to be published, but like I do want to see them. And if there are stories that I feel like have enough or we can build them into being enough, um, I would like to publish some, you know, some stories written. Like we, maybe we could even do like an anthology, which is like a group of stories or collections of wow, yeah. poems or, you know, like just small short stories. Doesn't have to be long. Don't get intimidated, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to see that and find a way to you know put some of those stories out so yeah for sure for sure (laughs) all right so mahalo nui moana our first ever guest uh reader very exciting yay (laughs) 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 right on (laughs) love to share you know the spotlight uh, because this is a beautiful story and instead of me reading it i love um, all of the EK, all of the knowledge that Moana brings to back up the story. It definitely wouldn't be something that I could translate so easy. So we're very blessed and thankful that Moana was able to spend time out of her busy schedule to squeeze this video in for you all. Um, now, uh, before we, we holo, wanted to know, like, how can, how can people get their hands on this? How, you know, how do they contact you? Go. Okay, so my website is Moana McAdams, M-C-A-D-A-M-S. I'm assuming you know how to spell Moana. <laughs> MoanaMcAdams.com. Um, if you go to the, on the top of the menu, there's a bookstore link. You can click that. And that is lists all the books that we have published um, here through Mahi'ili, as well as Burning Spirit Comics. We also have a comic book series that we also self-publish. Um, and a, there's an anthology um, in there uh, where I wrote a short story called um, Aftermath. 
and I talk about um, my experiences after Hurricane Iniki back in 92. So um, you can go to their bookstore um, and the Fishing Day with Papa Ray will be there. Um, at checkout, you can enter code Ayala A and you can get a discount on your book and uh -huh. I will sign it for you and send that out to you guys. There's a mahalo to Sister Lehua and Ayala A for inviting me to come on. All right. Well, Sister Mahalo Nui Loa again. Aloha Friday. Um, wishing you and your loved ones and your friends and family, your ohana, you know, nothing but beautiful things in the future. Looking forward to more um, adventures, um, storybooks from you. And again, thank you so much for sharing this time. And there's the information if you all need it. Adventures of Nakoa Nohea. Um, it's on Instagram, Facebook, MoanaMcAdams.com. Aloha, mm -hmm. sister. Mahalo nui. Ahui ho. Aloha. 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 Aloha.